Second. All right, we're live. Here we go. So, Miss Terry, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Tell everybody a little bit about what's what what, what you know who you are and what what happened. I mean, I just want to know, like, I, I guess, I guess the way to start it out is is how the heck did Hollywood approach you? You know, I know the listeners are going to be a little confused here at first, um, but how did they approach you about this for you to, to make a movie on you? Well, um, my name's Terry Wilson now, but well, back then during that, uh, Small. Good, yep, it was Terry Small. Now, I was young, dumb, and stupid, and you can tell by my accent where I'm from, because I'm originally from Nashville, and I'm saying this for a reason, because that's how this all got started, a lot of it. They didn't think some country gal from Nashville was ever going to do what I was going to do to get answers when a bunch of veterans and their wives and their kids started getting sick after Desert Storm. Right. And so, ironically, um, and, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of tell you how it all got going. I was married to an individual that was uh, in 5th Special Forces Group out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And um, in the movie, you'll see um, you'll see how it kind of started and, and understand that Hollywood didn't have to make it too much Hollywood because there was so much that they couldn't even cover that occurred that I'm hoping we talk about today. Right. Um, but one of the things uh, that, that happened is when he got on that plane to go to Desert Storm, I knew that he would not come back the same. It was just something that told me, get ready, buckle up, buttercup, because it was going to get interesting. And I had no idea. Again, I was young, dumb, stupid, didn't have a clue. And so literally when he does come back, um, and there's a scene in the movie about this, when he comes back, ironically, um, and it was actually Channel 2 News here in Nashville that just found me out of the crowd, okay? There was thousands of people up there at Fort Campbell, and this is when all the guys and gals were coming back, and this is when the big airplanes are, you know, landing, and they've got their American flags, and they're waving it out the cockpit and everything like that. And uh, a crew come up to me from Channel 2 News and said, hey, can we just follow you and, and see how you react, you know? And it was just ironic, right? You right, know, This right. is just out of the blue. And I said, sure, because I didn't care. You know, I, I, the last thing, you know, I was thinking about was them. I was just all, thank God, people were coming home, you know, alive, at least right. most of them and stuff. Didn't even think anything about it. But when I saw him come off the plane, I knew. I just knew. And he was just a totally different person. So to kind of give you perspective, um, he's six foot two. At that time, he was 210 solid muscles. Like, he worked out solid muscles. And by the time all this is said and done with this movie and everything, he got down to 138 pounds. That's how sick he got. Okay, so so, so I want to tell the, the, the listeners out there that the name of the movie is Thanks for a Great Nation. Thanks of a Grateful Nation, yep. Thanks of a Grateful Nation. Yes, sir. Sorry. No, no, you're But fine. what's weird is, is on the YouTube link I have, mm -hmm. it just says the Gulf War. Yes, so we'll get to all that yeah. because that's more of the cover up because yes. all you people out there that think there's no, you go, Oh, it's conspiracy, conspiracy. Yeah. It's a right winger that's with conspiracy. Um, well, this is a real one. It's really happened. Yeah. Um, and it's scary. And I'm going to tell you me and the wife, we watched it and halfway through it, she looked at me and said, there's no way this really happened. And I went, well, it really did. It was only a fraction. That they didn't even barely touch it. That's how bad this was. And and go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so no, 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 because I have I have a ton of questions, no, but it's, okay. it's so funny. I may ask them out of order, and I apologize okay. if I do. So so, what part of the special forces was what was your ex husband? He was like I said, he was at a fifth group uh, special forces. Now the majority of those folks are at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They had brought a section to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and he happened to be at that section. Um. Anyway, when when he they were the first units, uh, part of the first units to go over before the war began. They're the ones that went into Iraq first to make right. way for all the other people to come in. Right. Okay, so yeah. Was he a painter? Did he go in and paint and all that stuff? <laughs> I mean, that's what he did. That's what my dad did. Yeah, too. sure. He was, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Pla he Not was in that planning. War, but. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, yeah, I'm sure he was pla planting petunias out there in the middle of the desert somewhere. Sure. You know what I'm but, talking about. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. so he was in there amongst them, yep. big time. And then when they took them, uh, they had all the wives. Now this is what this is how far times have gone. Um, 
they had all the wives go to a class, number one, to teach them how to write checks. I was amazed with that. Like, a lot of people didn't even know how to take care of their own business. Okay, now, I can't make this up. Then they had us fill out this paperwork, and I had to get my passport because they said if it got bad that they would be flying us to Germany to identify the bodies. And I would have to have my, my passport to be able to do that. So that I remember that was the beginning, you know, of of knowing, boy, this is may not get good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Like, yeah. so, so they actually had so let me get this straight. They they had a class <laughs> to teach you how to write checks and take care of the bills at home. And of course, I already knew how because I was already running the business anyway. But I, I was shocked of how many people didn't, you know, right. and, and I want to tie that in, too. People don't know what they don't know. OK, and I say it sounds so <laughs> stupid, but so simple. Right. No, no, no. I but people don't know what they don't know. And then it's amazing how how people react differently. So you don't know what somebody's went through until you've walked in their shoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't make fun of anybody. I, I was willing to help and do whatever, you know. Right. I've always been that kind of person. So anyway. Well, that that. Um, so before he left, he was completely different. He was a completely different human, completely different human. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so it was more than just this. Um, now, in the movie, uh, I, I want to say, and, and, and oh, you guys out there, you can hit the link below the podcast here to get to the movie to watch it because they took it off. They took it off of all the streaming services <laughs> and someone put it on YouTube. Yeah. And it's got some big actors in it. The, you know, it's got that uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Ted Danson. Um, I guess the Steve the Steve Weber guy is kind of a big kind of a big name. Him in and, and yeah. Brian Dennehy and Brian Marty Dunahay. Hagel. Yeah, yep, yep. And, so and Marty Hagelberger. Yep. During the movie, it was odd because um, he had sent home a package, and you'd put on a t shirt. Then you got up and you had a uh, blisters on the back. Is that true? Is that really did that really happen? Okay, so so now with this movie because there was thousands of people there is a another part of this movie um it's actually it's like the uh, trailer is what it is and if you go and look it up it's the making of thanks of a grateful nation and what they were describing is there were thousands of people that they were interviewing and trying to pick who they wanted to do this movie about right and um I didn't even know I was, I wasn't in the running. I didn't go wave my hand and say, hey, let it be me. I didn't even know. Okay, so I didn't even take none of this serious. Now, at this point, I'm traveling all over the United States, and I'm speaking before all these veteran groups because I just lost my ass. I lost everything I had. I was driving a Yugo to Washington, D.C. to be able to testify twice. I had lost everything I could possibly lose. So the last thing on my mind was worried about what anybody thought. I was trying to get help and help these other families that were losing their butts because of whatever was going on with all these people coming back sick. So, um, you know, with that the way they tied that in is they had lots of different stories and they had me having, you know, rashes and stuff like that. I personally never had the rashes and I didn't break out with stuff like that because I did not get a package like that from him with clothes. I actually got a package with other stuff and, and I never, you know, it was funny when I did get a package, um, I did not touch it. Something told me not to mess with it. Number one. Okay. okay. So again, there's a lot of these deep seated gut feelings. I believe in that woman's radar. No, I believe in the good Lord taking care of folks. I think there's a reason why you have warning bells. You need to listen to them. Okay. Um, but I never did mess with that, but I had friends that did. Their husbands sent stuff back. They put on stuff and they thought it was all cool and stuff. And they were breaking out and, and, and it wasn't a rash. It was boiling up like somebody had just stuck you with a hot iron crazy stuff okay wow yeah it was insane and so now <laughs> uh i i gotta be nice because my my husband my my husband now that i love so much he's sitting out there <laughs> watching me but i gotta say this they had us having a lot of sex scenes in this movie <laughs> i had more sex than that movie i ever had in my life but anyway um so hollywood <laughs> had to jack it up a little bit you know we had to make it a little fun right uh, but they they showed where the wives and they showed it through me, okay, as having female issues after having relations with their husbands. Right. And this really was happening with a bunch of them. And then my daughter, who's now thirty, 
Uh, she was born exactly one year to the very minute that his plane landed coming back from Desert Storm. So he came back on March 20th, 1991. She was born March 20th, 1992, exactly at the time his plane landed, one year later. Wow. She had issues, okay? I was going to ask you, was yeah. it birth defects? Um, she had a lot of, she, we were in the emergency room. She'd be spiking these high fevers. She would be doing some crazy stuff beyond the normal kid with the, you know, the ear infections and the, you know, the whatever going on. This was well beyond. She would have rashes and stuff like that. Now, luckily, she was okay. My son, um, I was married to another desert stormer. You know, here we go. Yeah, I've been married too many times. Me and Elizabeth Taylor, we're hanging tight, but, you know, crap happens. If you don't first <laughs> succeed, you try, try again, and I got a good one out there. So anyway, <laughs> so my son, he has Asperger's. Oh. The the rate with Asperger, which is, you know, autism, okay? Right. Um, the rate amongst these veterans coming back from Desert Storm is astronomical. They And you know what? It's amazing. You go and you try to find stuff like that. I mean, they had all this information for the longest, and then all of a sudden it goes away, just like my movie did. This movie, you can't go buy it anymore. I noticed that. Yeah, and that amazing how we want to erase. Right when COVID-19 hit. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Isn't it amazing? So you know I'm going to tie this in because I... Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll just wait for a minute. I'll be nice. But anyway. No, you don't have to be. This is a podcast and people want to hear it cause, because, it, okay, so here's it. So it's obviously a government cover up. Yep. When did you realize that it was getting covered up? I mean, how far into this did you go, okay, now this is a bunch of BS. This is, I, you know, I got to figure out what's going on. And, but how long did it take you? I'll ask you the next question here. Just like, I got all guys. Not very long. And I'll tell you why. Um, again, when you start getting resistance, when you start asking questions, you know there's something wrong. And that should be with anybody. If anybody ever, and I'm talking about right now, if you you start asking questions, legit questions, Now I don't mean just stupid crap. I'm talking about some legit right. questions. You start asking questions with people, and they start giving you air. They try to dance around the table, and, and then they get mad after you ask it more than once or twice. You know you've got a – there's something going there's something on there. There's something going on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it didn't take less than six months, probably less than three, because he was that sick. He was going downhill pretty quick. So, yeah. So, so you, oh man, so did they, because in the movie it shows you still, still in medical records, did they try to prosecute you for that? Well, let me tell you what really happened with that, okay? okay. So I'm in the field of dentistry, and I've been in dentistry for 35, 36 years. I'm dating myself, okay? But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but I've been mm -hmm. in dentistry for a long time. And um, I had my scrubs on. Okay, so uh, what happened was, is I was working at Vanderbilt um, at the time. Okay, and I was, you know, doing some different things. But anyway, long story short, um, <laughs> that day there's there's a couple scenes in the movie where you know they he didn't because my my then husband did not want to get help because it was all about his career and he was scared that if he stood his ground or said anything he was going to get kicked out of the military because a lot of them did. And, and that's what was happening. It was a fear factor. Well, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to kick you out, you know, and, or you're not going to get promoted or you're going to get demoted. And this happened, happened across the board. You can ask many, many, many veterans and they'll tell you now, but they wouldn't tell you then because they were scared to. Well, anyway, I happened to have been home that day and I decided to go up to Blanchville Hospital. I can talk about it now. It's been 30 something years. What are they going to do? You know, I mean, I don't care. Actually, I don't care what they do. But anyway, I went to Blanchville Hospital and this is before the days of HIPAA. OK, HIPAA is that, you know, you got to right, be careful, right, right. which also meant absolutely nothing during COVID-19. And, you know, that's about to go away and they're about to drop all the new, you know, new rules with all that crap. And they're going to bring HIPAA back. But anyway, I go up to Blanchville Hospital and I've got my little scrubs on. And I told them that I was a nurse and I needed uh, Chris Small's uh, medical records. They gave them to me. I got in a car, drove to Clarksville, Tennessee, went to a Kinko's. It was Kinko's or whatever they called it at the time. Made copies of every. It wasn't a one or two pages like it shows in the movie. I copied a the entire file. The entire damn file. And guess what? The entire damn file went missing. So that file, okay, that file, I kept all that. I had multiple copies in multiple places. Something just kept telling me, okay? So anyway, um, I had, <laughs> and then um, about, and, and again, they didn't put this in the movie, but, I, you know, we're, we're living in Clarksville, you know, and all this good stuff, and there was some people that were starting to say, hey, we got a lot of sick people, and one guy got sent to, like, Fort Leonard Wood. 
because and you know that's where they arrest right. people and do stuff like that because they thought he was just being too much out of the box you know type deal well i something told me this and i'm, I'm telling you i can't make this shit up <laughs> but something told me to take the tire the spare tire out of the back of my car now i'm in a pontiac something i can't even remember what it was you know they don't even make pontiacs anymore but i can't remember what i had took the spare tire out and i don't know why i did this i don't even know why i did this and i get, get on the fort campbell and this guy that had been causing all this trouble had come back and they had him on post arrest in other words he wasn't allowed to leave the post okay right and he says come on back here and so i wound up over in the special forces unit stuff and i had all kinds of records showing where these guys had been had all this stuff and it was showing you know like like where all the you know it, you'll see as you saw in the movie you know where the the weather patterns were after they had blown up a lot of stuff and it, god it even sounds similar like that place up there in ohio you know where you set fire to oh, shit yeah. you know where i'm going okay so that that <laughs> hit a nerve on me this week you know last couple right, of weeks right. too same thing same thing and you you know and so anyway i took all these records and i put them in that that where that spare tire was and I got to the gate, gate four, in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I got pulled over because they found out that I was back because I'd already been on TV now. I'd already been going to the local news stations and raising hell saying something's wrong, something's wrong, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, so anyway, they stopped me and they searched my car. They couldn't find anything because it was in the, in the tire well. You know, all those papers were in the tire well. I drove off that post with that, and the first thing I did was call uh, Congressman Bob Clement, is who it was at the time. Right. And he's the one that got me to D.C. He says, I, I, I want this stuff, and, and, it, and the rest is history. And that's how that came with the movie. And when they, when they approached me, because I was on Red Book magazine, you know, I'd been interviewed all over, and I had an attorney call me. And they said, hey, Terry, we'd like you to be part of this movie. And I didn't believe, I thought it was a joke because I was getting calls from Germany and everywhere because people were dying at this point, okay? Right, so right. I didn't take anything serious. I hung up on them. So they called me back again about a week later. I hung up on them again because I, I didn't believe any of this. They showed up at my front door and they said, we're not joking. We want your story. Are you willing to do it? And then it, again, the rest is history. So that's how all this movie. Wow. Ended. That's so yeah. crazy. Yeah. It was insane. So, I mean, at the time this was all happening, you probably would have never dreamed that it would become a movie. No, no. And, and that's the thing. It's like. To me, the most dramatic part of it is is just you're just a young lady that's falling in love, and you're just you're just you know you got married and you thought this dude was the one, and this is going to be the rest of your life, and then all of a sudden he comes back from the war, and but hey, you wound up with a good man because he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> I got a good yeah. man out there. Now. He's crazy. He's, he's crazy as batshit, but I love him. <laughs> he's wacky as he could be, but I am not like I'm. Me. Oh, he's a good musician. He's me, a good. Uh... Me, me calling somebody wacky is even funnier. <laughs> That's what's even funnier. He's, he's a good guy. He's a good minister too. He he can he can <laughs> preach it when he wants to. <laughs> so 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 just to get down to the nitty gritty. Yep. So. Okay, because the reason why I was asking about your your daughter was because in the movie at the end he's sitting at the bed and he's yes. asking her if she's feeling better and all yes. that stuff. So at that point, okay, at that point you see right. that in the movie where he's right. sitting there at the end, you know, right. and he's sitting there asking. Um, we had gotten remarried um, because it did. He they did send him over to Hawaii. They did do all that, you know, because I raised so much hell and he he volunteered to get away from me because I was destroying him and everybody else and. You know, it's like that. there was a scene in the movie where all these people were shunning me. It was like a, they made us go to this military ball, okay? And there's a scene in the movie where they were doing like a charity. They had set up a table, and they were doing a charity for me, trying to embarrass me because I didn't. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That was not even a fraction of the credit. The one, the best part they left out, which pisses me off because it was the best. I wanted them to film this so bad, but they chose not to. Well, when they did that, I just looked. You know, that did really go down, you know, with me and the husband right there. I just said, all right, I'm done. And so me and one of the other guys that was getting shunned, he was a sergeant, and he, and, and he was sick too, okay? They had been giving him down the road. We packed our shit, went right across the street, and ate at Burger King. That's what I did. So all that money that they were sitting there doing, they were having that big ball, and they were doing with it. I was like, you know what? You couldn't pay me enough money to eat this. I would rot before I ever took the first bite. And went right across the street, me and him sat down and had a doggone cheeseburger at uh, Burger King. So things like that happened. People had no idea about getting shunned. 
and all the pressure that was there. Right. Like um, my daughter got kicked out of daycare because all the parents, especially when I started, especially like when the movie did, you know, when they started talking about it and it was starting to go, oh, it's coming here. We're going to have that. You know, Showtime was doing all their advertisement. And at that time, my daughter was in a daycare and um, I, all the mothers, I guess, got together and they came and called me up and said, you're going to have to remove your daughter from daycare because they're afraid that your daughter may give the kids something. So I got my daughter got kicked out of daycare. You talk about discrimination. You talk about, you know, I don't even want to hear when people give me crap like that. I'm like, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you should be bald with tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about discrimination. You folks out there that will know nothing about discrimination. Well, I'm not bald, you. but I got a couple Until of tattoos. A bald, a bald white man with a freaking beard that's got tattoos in America is not a good thing. Uh, I love it. And, it's and, good. and you know what? It might be my, my mom says it's my fault, but whatever. It's all. It's, it's all, all good. good. I That's like right. who I am. That's so right. there you Me go. Too. Me my, too. One of my best, very best friends is black and I look like me and him walking a place together and they look at us like, what are those two guys going to do? Because they think something's going to happen. <laughs> and half the things that they're thinking that we did before, right. we did. Right. But right. we don't do that anymore. Right. So. Right. But, anyway. but no, at the end of the movie, uh, it shows him sitting there and we had got back together, uh, but then we divorced again just because it was just too much. There is, you know, there comes a point, I do believe, I really believe in a point of no return, okay? And and when I say that, um, until you've experienced something like that, you have no idea. But there was a point of no return, and, and we're still friends. You know, I, I'm not so hating. He's still, so he's still alive. Yeah, he still he still struggles like they all. You know, the ones that are still, you know, above ground, um, they're still struggling. They're so battling many, this every day. So I want to ask you, was his whole uh, platoon or unit affected? Yes, Pretty much. They, I, I can't say that I know any of them that did not have some sort of issues after the fact. But here's here's the biggest question, and this is going to be a long answer, I can tell you. Why would our military not admit that those mustard gas and all those chemical warfare alarms, why wouldn't they admit that they were going off? We sold the stuff to Iraq. We sold oh, every I know. bit of I, the I chemicals. Saw that. and I, That's and, why. And and, yeah. and and do you know exactly what companies? No, but I will tell you this. I do remember one of the packs. Uh, you know, now you, you were talking about a package earlier. You know how it right, showed it. Okay. Right. So after he got home, okay, uh, they were packaging. They weren't able to bring all their stuff home at once so there was stuff that did come later okay and there was there was a box that came um one day and it had a couple of his uniforms and i again at this point i already knew something was up so i didn't touch it you know i'm talking about without gloves like i knew to do that i don't know again it might be the health care in me or something like you know being dental or whatever but I, I i went through it and guess what there's these packets Pyrostigmine bromide was the name of these packets. It's anti-nerve agent pills. Every one of them damn pills were not FDA approved, and every one of them guys and gals were used as guinea pigs, just like everybody was in the United States when they decided That's to do this COVID-19 shots. Absolutely. And this is, uh, yes, I'm going to admit, and I'm going to upset a lot of people. And listen, I I don't care who upset. This is this this is the way it is. Until you've lived it, seen it, and and know where there's some type of underlying issues going on, you can't look at somebody who refused to take the vaccine. Okay, I'm just going to say this. Okay, and, and look at them as being bad. Oh, they're the ones that's causing all these people to get sick and die. Listen, they're I not. had COVID nineteen. It almost killed. That's the closest to death I've ever been in my life ever. I didn't know that. Yeah, I had it, and that's the reason I got short hair. Half my hair fell out. I mean, I looked like somebody went through chemo. And this was two. And I had the bad stuff, the stuff that came through initially, and I still will never take that vaccine and, and and there was a reason because i didn't trust and and my husband and i now we've already had three friends unfortunately die after taking you know that vaccine but i've had a lot of people die too that i knew that had covid okay so i get it I, i'm not against anybody that took it what? i just didn't trust the government in believing anything that they had put together well, because i saw what happened in 1990 wish i'd have talked to you and had this podcast before i took it well, I, I understand. Uh, because, That's because what I'm you saying. know it's yeah. caused me a lot of trouble. Uh, but yeah. but now I'm getting better. It, it's yeah, it's no, a, right. It's a struggle. Yeah. And my You're way right. of life is different than it was before the vaccine. Um, but it's scaring people. It's using the fear factor. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, but, yeah, but, it was and, manipulation. And it's funny because 
this time last year when we had the podcast, we couldn't talk about this kind of thing. No, I know. They would flag us and kick us off here. Yeah. Uh, but now everybody's talking about it, so right. I think it's pretty free to talk about. I think, right. you know, we, but here's the double side of the vaccine on to, to me, yeah. and it's maybe yeah. the double side of those pills. Okay, yeah. so yeah. what if I had to taken it and I would have gotten COVID and I would have died? Right. Um even though I was around a ton of people who had it and never got it, because I have a type of negative blood, I might have red hair. I mean, those are the most <laughs> unlikely people to get it. Right, you know? right, I mean, right. And it's a real percentage, right. you know. Um, most people with red hair and type of negative blood, and if you smoke cigarettes, they say, well, that's the ones that do get it. No, no, no. no. If you smoke cigarettes, you are unlikely to get it. Right. Um, so I had all the things in my favor. I probably would have never got it and probably been fine. But whatever. It's right. over with now. I'm, whatever I got to live with, I got to live with. But right. I can see what you're saying like these, uh, so it had the anti-agent or anti. Well, there was or, vaccines also given to them. You remember that? You remember that? And it was entire, all guinea pig stuff. And it was like injections, the whole nine yards. And it was this, this was in his charts that I had taken from Fort Campbell that went missing that they never found, even though I had the original copies. Right. So that's what I'm saying is like, okay, how many? If you go back and you look at history, it's amazing. And again, I. I am, you know, I'm not again. I don't care if somebody's black, white, polka dotted from Mars. I don't care, gay, straight, what religion you are. This has got to do with facts, okay? Facts are is why is everybody so desperate to erase history? And there's a reason, okay, you know, there's an old saying, if you erase history, you're guaranteed to repeat it. No, duh, you think? So with that being said, what, you know, the the stuff that they would make all these companies go through in order to be able to put a drug out on the market before COVID, do you understand? Right. It would be 10-year, 15-year studies, right? Right. Boy, it's amazing. We had this to just, ooh, let's do it in a month, okay? I think they already had something brewed up don't they you? already had it planned well i'm not gonna get into that because we don't want this kicked up. it doesn't matter what my my you know like a, i make a joke i guess i need to have a, a tinfoil hat you don't really well i'll tell yeah. you after the podcast what i think really happened and i can tell you you probably think the same thing oh and yeah no no i know what happened yeah then we all yeah. know what happened oh, and yeah. everybody listening out there knows exactly yeah. what happened yeah and if you don't you're a fool if you can't see right. how obvious it was but that shunning, it go, I'm going back to the movie, and that right. being shunned, it's like what so many Americans had to go through here in the last two years. You know, I can't mention the employer that I was working with because I'm under an agreement until June of this coming year, of uh, this year, 2023. We'll have you back on here to slander them. Uh, okay, so I've got till June. But I will tell you this, I was made to have blood tests done, you know, every month to prove that I had antibodies for COVID because I refused to take the vaccine in order to keep my job. I feel so sorry for all these people that lost their jobs and their livelihood uh, and had been with companies. Did you hear Kroger sitting there begging people to come back now because they lost so many people? We, right now, I have two openings in my office. Uh, and I'm again, I'm still in dental, okay? Um, and, and, I, and I do a lot of speaking engagements, and I travel all over, and I do a lot of speaking engagements everywhere. I talk to people all over this country on a weekly basis because I'm, you know, I'm very much involved with my field. Everybody's short of staff. And there's a reason they're short of staff. Everybody got tired of that crap and being forced to do shit that they didn't want to do, and they left it. The nurses, right. listen, Vanderbilt and everybody right now is hurting for staff. And, and this is not funny because this is a crisis. And do you hear them talking about this all the time on TV? Well, hell no, because they don't want everybody knowing the truth. God forbid, you know? Right. And, so, and, 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 and the government, obviously, this was a big cover-up. And uh, one of my questions was, do you think there's a lot of this that goes on? All the time. Absolutely. Do you think, they, do you think the government covers up things? Absolutely. Which are right? And I think a lot of things, and again, I don't want to get off on the Ukraine crap and, and everything else, but I'm telling you right now, I'm just, oh it doesn't. God. It doesn't seem like it's the, uh, where, it doesn't seem like there's, it seems like there's something wrong with the picture here. It is. Uh, yeah, something's wrong. Something's not being told to us. And, um. And you know, have you noticed, you know, this is one of the things that we, we talk about a lot too, uh, and I'm talking about my, in anywhere, like I can be anywhere, I can be in an airport and it's amazing, I'll be talking to people I don't even know and they'll say the same thing, is like, have you noticed how 
just everybody is unhappy and they're angry and it's like anywhere you go you can't get good customer service but if you did i mean you got people fussing and fighting all the time like i had to walk away the other day i was in kroger's trying to get something and you saw two people sitting there throwing down over a piece of whatever it was i don't know if it was a piece of fruit or something that they had bought at kroger's and i'm like People are just not nice anymore. I mean, it's just gotten horrible. They're not. You and, know? and, you know, I told somebody um, the other day, I, I missed the days of Bill Clinton, <clears throat> where if you liked him or not, which right. I thought he was a great president because <laughs> I thought some of the stuff he did was so crazy. I loved it. <laughs> and it seems like since then, we haven't had a very happy country. I've never seen such a divided country. And, and it goes back to this movie. You know, they named that movie, Thanks of a Grateful Nation, sarcastically. Right. Because no one is feeling any thanks, you know, and, and, and like a, a lot of things when men and women listen, you know, I, I've been in, in, in D.C. a many a times, you know. And I was going to ask you about that, you know. The... And that's tough. And, and, and when I'm looking at, you know, because I was so proud of this country and I was proud of so many things. I'm not proud anymore. And that's hard to say. Listen, I didn't think I would ever say that, but I am ashamed of how because I, I let me just put it this way i'm neither on the i'm obviously not on the left side and i'm not much on the right i'm i'm about as independent as you can get yeah, because i, I see them both playing each other against each other does that make sense you know it's, it's ridiculous yeah it's crazy and i've never seen so much division in my life ever 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 and I want to be proud of the country, but I can't when there's so much division and hatred and people, they just can't wait to backstab you. And But anyway, going back to the movie thing, um, when I was young and, and very impressionable at that point, I didn't know. I, I guess I didn't realize how dangerous what I was doing was. And so getting into that movie, there's a there's several scenes there with this guy that's meeting Ted Danson, okay? So, so, so this particular guy... He worked for the VA, and I'm not mentioning any names, and it's irrelevant, okay? He was also someone that was helping me. And I remember one day I had someone, they said, you need to show up, and I, I had to go, like, in front of Fort Campbell, and I'm meeting this strange person. I could have got killed. I mean, I, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm stupid. I didn't know, but I didn't care. I was so determined that I was going to find answers. Come hell or high water, there was nothing going to stop me. And so I go and meet this individual. And he never revealed his name, never, you know, and we're sitting there at a Waffle House. And, and, and anybody that lives up there at Fort Campbell area, they pretty much know wh where I'm talking about. It's up down Fort Campbell Boulevard on the on the Kentucky right. side. So anyway, I met at him at this Waffle House, and we had some very— uh, I think I've been to that Waffle House. I bet you have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if have. you've been up down 24, you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, we met at that place, and I never saw that guy again. And— and this was right before I did my first testimony in Congress. So I was going to be going to D.C. like the very next week. And as soon as I got in D.C., all the Vietnam veterans of America, so the VVA folks, is who come to our rescue. Because you got to remember that Desert Storm was the first war since Vietnam. Now, I'm 20-something, and i got these, you know, 40-something-year-old people coming up to me and saying, hey, let me tell you what not to do. Okay, so they were, they were keeping me, you know, straight on stuff. And I had a bodyguard with me the whole time. Like, I had threats. I had so many death threats during that time. That's how I knew I was definitely barking up a tree. They didn't want me to bark up. And with my accent being a little old country gal, so they didn't think you, I'd go that far with it. When you say you got death threats, I mean, did you get phone calls? All right, so you saw a scene in the in the movie about Senator Rockefeller. Okay. Right. He was the one that called me and says, you know your phone's tapped, and they're not liking the information that you got out of Fort Campbell. You definitely need to be watching yourself. Like, he wasn't against me. What he was saying is, you probably need to take it serious, is what he was saying. So I wasn't allowed to... Um, I mean, I had people around me at all times. And even in the hotels, they would stay there with me. I remember one time we were in a hotel, like literally this was at the second testimony that they didn't, you know, they didn't have time to show all this in the movie. Uh, we were sitting in a hotel and mysteriously there was smoke starting to be everywhere. And I'm sitting there and it's actually with one of the characters that they showed in the movie. The guy's name was Gary Wall. And uh, anyway, we were sitting there having breakfast because we were all getting ready to go up to Oval, you know, Hill, do our thing or whatever. And all of a sudden, it's like they set the damn thing on fire. I just sat there. I wasn't going to move. I didn't care if it burnt down to the ground because I know they were trying to do the fear factor stuff. I don't even know what happened. We, we all of us, there was a bunch of us. I bet there was about, you know, 20 vets. It was all a bunch of Vietnam guys and, and uh, several of the sick uh, Desert Storm <coughs> guys. 
And we were sitting there having breakfast that morning. And seriously, so we sat there. And they kept saying, well, y'all need to leave. Y'all need to leave. No, we don't. I'm going to finish my damn breakfast. And I did. And then I left. And then I went and testified. <laughs> You well, know. this was in this was in Fort Campbell. Or no, this, well, this was in D.C. Yeah, and of course, you Do know. Do you feel? I mean, the question is: is does does um, did the actions that was going on? Do you feel like they came straight from the top? And when I say from the top, I'm talking the top. Who was president at that time? Um, let's see. Was it Bush? It was Bush. And it, no, it actually, what? it was senior. But then you got Clinton that was in there when all this, when, about the time the movie. And well, here we I am talking about how good of a president he was, but I mean, he covered up this. Because Bush, you know, you know, you know, but he was in between. You know what I'm saying? So you had all this kind of going on. So there was actually two regimes going on there. So I'm not sure because here we go again. I'm sitting there like Bobby Kennedy. Okay. The, you know. Okay, Kennedys are pretty much known to be Democrats. Right. All right. But now you got to, I want to tell you right then, they were, they didn't act like Democrats. They were trying to help me. Like I, I right. was with them, meeting with them in between these, you know. So I get, I just, like I said, everything changed. I don't know what has happened, but all of these wow. people, you know, that was involved at that time and just even how I think things, do I think it come from the top? I think here, here's the thing. I tell everybody to follow the money. Okay, usually. Right, All right. right. Now people need to start following the power. It's about control. You know what? You don't make enough money. Uh, it's all about control. That's how come they had us all locked down for a year. That's how come they had everybody wearing masks and scared to death. It was control back then, too. The more that they controlled these veterans to make them think that they had PTSD, like they tried to blame on all the Vietnam veterans. Now, don't get me wrong. The Vietnam guys saw a whole lot more action than the Desert Stormers, but the Desert Stormers were used as guinea pigs. They they were having health problems. They may not have seen a crap load of, of dead body. They saw a lot of people get blown up. Don't get me wrong. You saw a scene there, but they, there was a scene where there was dead animals and the flies around the, de the dead right. animals were dead. They contaminated that whole area. This is between Saddam and even what anybody else is doing. Who knows who was doing all that mess over there? Right. Well, that's, that's, that's one of my questions. Cause I wonder if all this was from them gassing us or chemical or biological, whatever, or was it, um, was it the vaccines that we gave our troops? One, do you I think it's a, I think it was a whole, whole host of things. I really do. I think it was a mix because, um, let me tell you an example. So some of the Navy CBs, okay. I dealt, I had to deal with mm, them. That's what okay. my dad was. Yeah. And, 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 I love them guys. It was a group out of Alabama, um, and they showed them, you know, in the movie and stuff like that. But it, it wasn't just that, because like I said, I was all up in New York, New Jersey. I was all over the country, you know, talking to all the different veterans and stuff like that. But there was people that never was in theater, meaning where the war was at the time, right. okay, that got sick. Okay. So, so it was you had to, you had to start ask. there you go asking, you remember me saying, if you start asking legitimate you would think legitimate questions and you start getting all that pushback and you're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, why are you even bringing in people like that? Well, wait a minute, they're sick too. So why can't you answer this? So now, now it gets even worse. we got all these people that's coming back home. Now the wives are sick. They weren't over there. So how the hell are they sick? Okay. Now the kids are being born. They're sick. Mm, now where did this come from? You know, oh, let me guess PTSD again, right? So all that depression just went all the way through all these people, and right. here they're born with all kinds of things going on, congenital issues with their hearts, well beyond the normal. Just like you're having uh, a, an uptick of things going on right now. You know, since people have had the vaccine, I'm not trying to scare anybody that's took it. I'm just saying, God bless. I'm anybody. scared of death. Something's gonna happen to me. Well, I'm not against anybody that if they listen. Here's the thing. The reason our men and women went over to fight any battle to ever make this country be this country was for freedom. Number one, I, I believe 100 percent in freedom of choice, period. OK, I'm talking about my freedom of speech. OK, you, why are you worried about what I'm going to say? You know, that's what that's what all this is about. But yet you're going to control. Like you said, we couldn't have had this podcast a year ago. There's no, no we way. couldn't. Have. No. So, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 well, it, because they say that the government doesn't have any control over YouTube or, or any of the social media platforms, but that's completely sure. Yeah, yeah. I believe you see. I well, signed up for believing that. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. you know, they, 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 they point what direction things go, and that's the way they got to go. But again, it's about control.
a hundred percent about control. Well, that's that's why I want to ask you how you know. I've done a little testifying myself, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but no, um, how how did um, the Supreme Court greet you? As far as did they did they were they hateful? Were they were they just inquisitive and and just? Well, it wasn't really a Supreme Court. Now, again, this is congressional hearings. Okay, so, congressional so, yeah, hearings. So you're okay, walking in. Yeah. Court. And a lot of people don't realize, um, you know, listen, again, I am I only knew what I knew. Remember I said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I go to D.C., never been to D.C. a day in my life. Remember, I'm young, dumb, and stupid back then, okay? And I'm sitting there thinking, oh. Ooh, this is our, you know, great nation, whatever the case is. And I did not realize that entire city has got more tunnels underneath it. I don't think I walked above ground almost the whole time I was there. And I was amazed of all the things that were going on, you know. And if you start reading the history of how things got started, even like the Washington Monument and stuff like that, there was scenes in that one, like where you got on YouTube to see that. I kept telling, you know, Keith, my husband, um, we were sitting there. I, I watched as soon as you and I talked about maybe talking about this. I haven't watched that movie in um, probably 15, 20 years. I, right. I tried to bury a lot of that because, like I said, that movie still didn't even touch the top of it at all, okay? And when I sat there and I saw what was on there, they didn't have everything on there, okay? There was certain right. things still missing, and that's cool, whatever. But I also have parts where uh, Channel 4 News got involved, okay? So Channel 2 News, you know, here in Nashville, and then Channel 4, which is WSM, um, they, you know, they got, that's NBC, um, they followed me when I did one of my testimonies. Okay. So, oh, wow. and they had videotaped this and they did like a three night series and I have that, but you couldn't find that nowhere if it meant the life, but I've got it. Listen, I've got it all. And I've got duck copies everywhere, you know, backed up and done. Wow. Whatever. But I knew again, just like then when I stole, and I, I, I guess I stole it, took it. It was it was property of ours that was rightfully ours, meaning his medical records. Okay, right. I should able be able to have a copy of his medical records. I should not have to be doing anything like I had to do to get a copy of somebody's medical records. I'm talking about my own, mine or his or whatever the case right, was, right? right. Um, but you know, the thing of it is, is you've you've got so much going on with manipulation this day these days and distractions you know i tell my husband all the time i said it's distractions and when we were sitting there watching that movie and i mean it took me back like i had to get up you can ask him i had to get up and walk around like i started having anxiety like i i guess i get ptsd does that make it when i hear somebody talk about that of course you don't realize you don't have to go see a war to have ptsd OK, you don't you can live it other ways like I did. And that bothered me. And it took me a minute and I had to stop it and walk around and OK, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to see it again, you know, type. Right. So it, it brought back some. Anger. And that's that's one of the reasons why I was worried about asking you to do the podcast, because I didn't know how you felt about what happened. And, and you know, and I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to call you any, cause you any emotional stress because you are married to a good friend of mine. And, and I then when I told I've been telling people about what's doing this podcast, I, mm. I usually do like this Facebook live thing in the morning and tell people about what I'm doing. But but I think this one is going to be in the record books as far as this podcast goes, because I think it's so interesting because we we hadn't even touched on like what kind of chemicals did they gas us and. Do you feel that maybe Saddam Hussein thought, well, they think they got me? Until they found him in that hole. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, though, but they think they won the war, but really we— No, um, I, no I think— I think, you think he, he was ignorant of it? And and I don't know. I think, I think that, um, well, number one, that was a political war period, okay? That, that right. was over, you know, a lot of different things. Sometimes, you know— I guess I'm about if you can't take care of home first, why are we worried about everybody God, else's business? you sound just like us on Tater Talk, yeah. Oh, my God. And so, yeah, I just, it bothered me. But now, go, don't get me wrong, I understand on some things, but a lot of this we brought on ourselves, okay? Um, but as far as Saddam, do I think Saddam was worried? I think he was probably sitting back laughing, thinking that he got unscathed there for me. I really do. I think it was a joke how it kind of went through. When I say I thought it was a joke, and I don't mean disrespectful, 
I, we had way too many people to get sick and die because of this thing. Okay? And how many people did get sick and die? Well, if you, you know, at the end of the movie, by the time that movie, it took three years to get that movie made because of all the legalities. We had to go through all kinds, because you've got to remember, you've got a lot of congressmen and senators that were involved right, in this. Right, so right, So there was a lot of legal stuff that had to be done. But Tom, I think at the end there, I think they said that at that point, it was, now, that movie came out in 1998, okay, and it was on uh, Showtime, and it was a three-part series, I think is how they did it, over two or three nights or something, and it was 100,000 people at that point. After that, we got in the upwards of almost 275 to 350,000 people that had filed uh, claims against the VA for illnesses that was related to that war at that point. And and I guess that was, it was another, maybe it, may, it should be a later on question, but was you ever compensated for any of this? <laughs> okay, so when... when well, they do give you a $1,000 check and say, we're sorry. Uh, uh, no. So what happened is you saw in some of the, in some of the movie, and again, I, w I want to encourage people if they can find it, um, they need to go look at it. It's got nothing to do with, you know, talking about Terry. It's talking about what, what really, really happened here. Yes, it'll be at the link below the podcast. And a lot of these veterans were in the VA now, okay, uh, or VA or, or active duty or whatever the deal was, whatever it was. But when they wound up in the hospitals, especially at the VA, this is why there was a big issue with the VA, okay, they were having to clean their own rooms. I'm talking about they were making these sick people clean. There was nobody taking care of them. You talk about a disgrace. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so um, we we got half his pay got cut. Um, like I said, it got to the point to where I was happy to get a, a, a pack of meat to be able to eat. Like, it got that bad. That's what I'm saying. So I know what it's like to have to struggle and wonder where the next meal is coming from. Did and they, did they cut his pay? Like Absolutely. After you went and, and said something about it. Yep. When I started going to the media, uh, it started on Veterans Day of 1993. I was in North Carolina at that point. Um, he was on recruiting duty. And by the way, that's where that one scene was. They, they made it look like it was at Fort Campbell, but that scene with the ball where everybody was all dressed up and everything. So that was about the point. And they did. They reduced his pay. They absolutely cut his pay. So I was working two jobs at my daughter, Alex. Um, that's, you know, and that's her real name in the movie, but, and that's her name. Anyway, I was working two jobs, and I had somebody that lived next door to us. Thank God for that woman. And I don't even know where she is or anything. And if you're out there and you recognize my, my Reba McIntyre sounding voice, I love you, and I appreciate everything you ever did to help me, uh, but she watched my baby while I was sitting there working two jobs, everything I could to keep food on the table because my husband was sick at the time and he was doing everything he could to get through. And it showed a part in the movie where he couldn't even pass his physical therapy, you know, the PT test. And that, and so they were getting ready to kick him out. And that's why he chose to go to Hawaii so he could get rid of me. So he thought he was not going to be sick anymore if he got rid of me. See, that's how this all this psychological, they messed with these people psychologically and everything else. And they turned everybody what? against each other. Oh, yeah. They were saying that I was a problem. Do you know how many divorces come out of Desert Storm? And a lot of people think, well, it's because of a war. No. When, when these veterans... Both female and male, because it was females that were going over during that time, okay? So it's not just about a male veteran. It was female veterans, too. And, and when these people were going over, they were using all this psychology stuff, saying, oh, it's PTSD, and that's what's wrong with you guys, and that's why y'all are getting divorced and everything. It, it went off the Richter scale. Again, people have no idea how much manipulation and control was being used with just throwing that pressure on folks, you know. So that's what happened. Yeah. And, and it was all to cover up the fact that the United States sold Iraq the chemicals to produce these weapons of mass destruction that we denied them using against us. Absolutely. Until it come out in one of the hearings where they had enough proof. Absolutely. So then um, there was a part in the movie where they were talking about the other countries. So I was getting phone calls from England, Germany. I mean, I, I'm serious. It got to the point it got really crazy. And then, then I had forgotten about something. Uh, when I watched the movie, it reminded me. I said, you know, right there at the end, um, well, actually, after the movie came out and stuff, I had... Um, I had this one guy, he was stalking me, and I had to get a restraining order against him, and I don't even know how he found me. Like, they didn't give enough of my information to where somebody could do that, but apparently they knew me or found out who I was. I didn't know them, and they were following me up at work. I mean, it got crazy. 
<laughs> really? But yeah. what, what was he following you for? Was he an admirer? No, I think he said <laughs> that he was looking for, no, he was that desperate because he couldn't get help through the VA. He was a veteran. Oh, wow. And he didn't lost it that much. Okay, so so I'm not putting him down again. I'm not mentioning names. Right. But I didn't take it as an admirer. I, okay, it was a different... You know how you know when somebody's... Okay, there's a difference when somebody's stalking you because they got the hots for you or something like that. Of course, right. I'm nothing to look at now. I used to be young once, okay? Hey, man, so, it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> I, get stalk, I get stalked all the time. <laughs> of course, I'm But joking. it's funny, it's funny. But what I'm saying is, is I saw... There was just a different vibe with that. Like he was that desperate to try to get help because the VA wasn't helping. I had people calling me. Who do I call? I call my senators, my congressmen. No one's helping us. What do we do? So there's a part in the movie where it shows some of the wives calling me back and saying, Terry, you were right. What do we do now? We've lost everything. They're sick. They got kicked out. They got, you know, out of whatever. So so in answer, I know it was a long uh, answer, but in answer, um, I'll tell you what I got paid. Uh, nothing from the government at all. Now, my both of my ex-husbands have now disability. It took 10 years for them to finally get a disability check. They're not 100%, okay, at all, neither one of them to this day. One of them is still able to work. The other one is not, not able to work at all. He got a, he finally, after 25 years of fighting, he got 90% disability. And these are educated. Both of them have got a college degree and everything else like that. They got that sick over time. And, you, you know, here I am, you know, I tell everybody I'm, you know, I'm in my 50s, mid to late 50s. I'll just put it that way. They're a couple of years older than me and they're that sick. And it took that long of fighting continuously just to get a damn paycheck. And so when I the but movie, why, but why, but why wouldn't they? And because they look, I mean, of course, you know, you're not them, but I'm just wondering, like, was there ever a cure, and was there ever a diagnosis, and was there ever like a this equals this, right? Um, and, and this is what we're going to do about it. Right. Did it ever come to that? No. And here, so so what happened? So they covered it up the whole time. They covered up pretty much the whole time. So what happened, and I got, I'll tell you what, I got paid for the movie, $50,000. You know where that $50,000 went? Medical bills that the VA would not cover. That's how bad off we were. That's how, my, and, and when you saw the stories in that movie of these families talking about how they lost everything, and their medical insurances weren't paying anything. Because after, you you know, you're out of the military and you've got a pre-existing condition, guess what you don't get in the private sector, you know, right. is, is it, unless you've got a lot of darn money per month. So, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So that's what was happening. Oh, I know how it is. I'm from another planet. They won't insure aliens. Yeah, well, anyway. me, right, yeah, yeah, right, me either, right, right? I'm from that same planet, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but you know, th what happened was they had studies, okay? So they did studies. And my husband at the time was part of that study. And they sent us to good old uh, New Orleans. And this is before the hurricane went down there and wiped all that out. And this, So this is how long ago that was. And they found, ironically, um, and I don't know, it, it wasn't a permanent fix, doxycycline, an antibiotic. OK, it seemed to help with a lot of their symptoms because he was like it shows a part in the movie where, uh, in, you, you know, you've heard of kidney stones. He had intestinal stones, passing stones from his intestines, along with other things. OK, I'm talking about crazy stuff that's not the norm. OK, and a like, bunch of like nuclear like um, infection or, or, or Just, like, you know, being, you know, to radiation, you know, absolutely. Well, the they had they've been around all, yeah, exactly. They're, like I said, there was a lot more going on than what. Um, what well, did did they? What was said? But but now the I know they said there was a S mustard gas. That was one of them. And there was another agent though that was um man I had it written down, it was ridiculous though. Um, yeah, and I can't remember. There was several, and you know, in one of the testimonies um, that they did, one of the hearings that they did, uh, they were listing all of those chemicals because there were so many of them that they were finding um, that was happening. And then they were sitting there at that's, one that's point. Where, that's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. And so then they were saying, so let me tell you this. I, I got to tie this in, too. So there was a lot of these guys and gals that came down with a condition called leishmaniasis, okay? And that usually comes from sand fleas and flies, sand flies. Okay, so they're over there in the desert, duh. Okay, what was happening, though? 
the pure steaming bromide pills, all right, so you got the anti-nerve agent pills, right? You got these vaccines that nobody even knows what the hell was in them that they gave to these guys. It broke down their immune system, okay, here we go, and it made them pick up all these diseases. Now, their body wasn't already natural to that area anyway, because, you know, obviously people weren't living in Saudi Arabia or wherever, you know, whatever, okay, Iraq and stuff like that. But regardless, you and I could probably go to Iraq and, and not drop dead or get deathly ill with some of these diseases that these people picked up, hundreds of thousands of them, okay, if our immune system was working like it's supposed to. Right. They turn around and they give you a bunch of crap that they don't even know themselves what's going to do. They didn't even test it on lab rats. Uh, the humans were the lab rats. So let's see what happens. That's exactly what happened. Do you see what I'm saying? So it yeah. broke their immune system down, and they. so that's how the VA did it. They twisted it, okay, to where they're saying, well, they picked up a disease that's common to that area. They did this, or this, this disease could be picked up, you know, like if you and I ate a, a bowl of lettuce and we got some, you know, whatever. And I'm sitting here going, no, these people's immune system are broke down, okay? And they can't handle the normal things, period. I don't care what it is. The common cold would take somebody out, you know, with them. Sounds, really? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Deja vu? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and because of, I don't know how many specialists I've been to, and it's all the same right. story. Right. We don't know. Of course. We just know that your inflammation blockers don't work anymore, but we don't know them. I yeah. mean, we don't know. Right. So right. I'm still in limbo on that. Right. Um, and everybody knows it. I'm in the gym now working out and stuff. But, but you know, I want to get back to being myself again. I want to be able to get big and freaking look good. And, right. You know, right. have my young wife look at me like, yeah, I got to, <laughs> you know, instead of me being a little, you know. There you go. Just a, just a little bit of humor in here, you know. No, I mean, but you look great. I I'm mean, the don't, guy. Don't, don't, but, yeah. but, look, but look, I told her, I said, honey, I know when you were a little girl, you went to your mother and said, you know, I want to meet my dream man. This short, bald, fat, freaking red beard. I tattooed up fabulous. man my absolute dream man she starts <laughs> laughing i'm far from the tall dark and handsome category so i gotta have all the help i could get you know oh, but but but, good. but no so so there never was a conclusion to this whole thing still it's and still, they never admitted that it was they did finally come out and admit that they definitely they made had, some mistakes. Yeah, of course, of course. And it's like right now, we've made <clears throat> mistakes, like everything right now. You notice, like I said, we're not be, us, us uh, non vaxxers. I'm not going to say anti vax. I'm not against vaccines. I, I want to make that clear. I'm against ones that have not been proven to be effective, and I'm against anything where you're starting to mess with somebody's DNA. I, I will always be that. But here's the deal. It's like when they come out and they say, well, you know, um, maybe this this vaccine doesn't work after all as, as much as we thought. You know, again, everybody started getting sick that had taken the vaccine, right? right? Okay. So either way, and, and it's like, and then that made me start questioning vaccines, period. So again, I didn't understand why I was so angry, and I won't tie this in. Uh, about COVID because I was angry and I don't know why. And let me, let me explain. But like I told you, I had not watched that movie in 15 or 20 years. Right. When I watched that movie the other night, I, that, you know, that deep buried down, I, I, it come to me. I'm like, there's where that's coming from because I got so mad with all that had happened with all the forced, you know, manipulation from desert storm. I saw deja vu and that's what happened. So now I've got a son. Okay. Like I told you, he's got Asperger's. I got three grandbabies sitting over in California. All right. So two of my three grandbabies, ironically, have all of a sudden started having seizures after the second round of childhood vaccines. Parents and doctors and anybody listening to this, I don't care who you are. If anybody has had those issues, boy, I wish you'd let Malcolm know or do a little comment because I guarantee you, y'all need to be looking at what's happening because from the my, there's nine years difference between my daughter and my son. Okay, my daughter's 30 now and my son's 22 now. The increase in childhood vaccines was doubled from that time. So my son had twice the vaccines that my daughter had. Okay, I'm just wanting getting people to think. You know, you can lead a horse to water, you can make it, you can't make it drink. You can lead right. a human to knowledge, you can't make them think. I'm trying to get y'all to think. Y'all need to hear this, you need to think about this. I'm all about protection. I'm all about, uh, you know, again, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but boy, I, I'm an anti-guinea pig person. Okay, I'm sorry, I just am. You know, I'm blunt to the point. 
And, you know, I realize that I'm saying things that may not be the most popular idea, but anytime you stand your ground, there's always consequences. And I'm willing to take those consequences. I took it back in 1992. Obviously, by the movie you are. (laughs) But it just angers me right now. I'm just like, I'm so tired of the no no answers. You're a person that just wants to get the answer. I want want, the answer. And you want a solution. And you never really got that. And that's what's a shame. Yep. And, and, you know, you know, I was going to say something funny about it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say if my ex-wives, if they took, if they took that over there, I'd been like, Cool, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm just joking. I got kids with those women, or whatever they are. Oh God! Those things, those things that cost me all kinds of money, and the only thing I got was two great sons. But there you go. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I mean, you know. No, well, okay. Again. So I'm gonna ask you some <laughs> some off okay. questions. Um, no, go ahead. Do do you feel like going and testifying though helped you though? I mean, do you feel like it got did it make you feel better about things? And did you get did you have a little closure from it? Did no, you have- I want to tell you why. It was also limited. Okay, you, you, you've only got so many minutes, you know, because they had a lot of people that were coming down sick. So they, I mean, we're talking thousands. Okay, so, the, you know, every time, and they weren't even showing the fullness of that in that movie. Okay, um, so you had a very limited amount of time. And depending on what hearing that you were testifying at, they told you what subject that they wanted you to answer on. So you couldn't tie in stuff. So in other words, they were cherry picking what they wanted to hear. Right. So, no, I don't feel like I, hell no. Let me just be real. Okay. Hell no. I don't at all. And, and, no. and, and have, did, did you hear of any, did you hear of anything that had these vaccines and, and, or chemical agents being used in the Afghan war? Well. Was, was there any, was there any, did, did, did they learn their lesson from Desert Storm? And then when the Afghan war started, did that do you think that they stopped using what they were using vaccine wise and, and, you know, I'm going to say, it? I'm going to answer it real quick and I'm going to say it and I'm going to tell you why the answer is no. And I want to tell you why I say no. They just now are, are, are considering about lifting the mandate for the COVID vaccine. Do you understand what I'm saying is, is it some kind of vaccine? It doesn't matter if it's COVID vaccine. It doesn't matter whose vaccine. They're going to use the military. I mean, again, this is so sad. I, I don't, want i told my children i don't want you signing up to serve our country because i don't want you being a guinea pig that's horrible i can't believe i would ever say that because i'm proud like i said until i I, I saw this movie and (laughs) talked to you tonight i I really was kind of wanting my kids to you know my dad had a dream of me being a navy pilot and right of course i have a dream of one of my boys being a navy pilot and but i uh, i I loved our country and my daughter ironically married a a guy uh, and that's why they're out in california he got blown up in Afghanistan, and he's on a 90% dis. I guess he is. He's on like 90 or 80-something dis- uh, percent disability. He's a young man. He's in his 20s. And I will tell you, though, it's come a long ways because he got help a whole hell of a lot quicker than any of these, especially the Vietnam guys. I don't even know how they suffered. No wonder they're angry. I don't blame them. Good God they had to go through the gates of hell back, and then they're still fighting this crap. And now the Desert Storm folks, I guess they thought if enough of them died off, got sick and died off, they everybody, wouldn't have to, Everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I have a saying, when hell freezes over, pigs fly and elephants roost in trees, and then by God, I'll take your ass down the ice because I'm going to fight it. And it's not the Desert Storm thing. I'm not fighting that war. That's done. But I learned from that. You know, I, I told my husband I, when we were driving over here, and I, I know I probably say too many four-letter words, but I, I am a Christian, and, and I, I totally believe in Jesus without a doubt. God doesn't care if you say four-letter words. Yeah, right. If he's that petty, we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it stands for fornication under carnal knowledge, and shit stands for sanitation high in transit. So it I don't feel bad about this, so I'm just letting you know. But I'm being real. But I just, I guess my thing is, there, there's a Esther 414 there's a story in the book of Esther in, in, in the Bible for such a time as this I did not know why in the world I was going through what I was going through in 1990 
91, 92, 93, 94. Like, there was eight years of my life that I barely remember because it was just constant. Again, we still hadn't even touched half the crap that happened, okay? That said, here we are today, and look at what's just went down with this entire world. This is not even a country thing anymore, okay? It's a world thing. It's yeah. a world thing, okay? And and as much as anybody wants to say I'm crazy, that's okay. Um, again, I, I don't plan on arriving at a grave or at my grave in a well-preserved body. I'll probably be sliding in sideways screaming, holy shit, what a ride. So <laughs> if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way, right? Right. But you're you're seeing change going on right now that is affecting everybody. And that experience that I had with Desert Storm has made me be more aware of things that are happening now. It's not right. under a war circumstance, but it is. You really are under a war circumstance. Everybody right now, if they don't realize that they're getting attacked every which way but Sunday, I'm talking about with manipulation, spiritual, whatever. I don't care. You know, like... I, you know, like I told you, I'm not on either side. I'm not on the right. I'm not on the left. Uh, I'm definitely not on the left, but I'm not on either side. But I'm even questioning, you know, they're they're penetrating even like the churches. Like I'm seeing how they're using church stuff on TV and things. That's and, going on right now. And their I've manipulation. Yeah. And, and, and I'm a good, I am a God fearing. I'm a Christ. I don't even call myself a Christian anymore. I'm a Christ follower. You know what they did? They put a label on Christians, just like they put a label on other people. People like to label people. Have you ever noticed that? I know. And so know. that labeling, I'm getting tired of labeling. You know what? I'm, I, I, I'm just done with that. So I think that that war then has brought on my war now to get people to be more aware of their surroundings. Don't be part of the woke people because that's crazy. Don't be part of any. You, you need to ask questions and seriously look. So here's the thing. If I give you everything you want, okay, I, let's say I'm the government, okay, and I give you absolutely everything you want, I got control over you. So if you got free money coming, free assistance, free everything else going, you're going to do what I tell you to do or you're going to get it taken away from you. How else would you, do you see? That's exactly what they're doing. Right. They don't care about all these people. Uh, they don't care about these people. Look at go ask them people up there in Ohio, Ohio right now that just had all that crap done to them. I mean. Yeah. What do you think about that? Same thing. Oh my cover up. It's a cover up big time. How dumb. Can, OK, I understand that chemicals leaking and I got this okay I, I get all this stuff but you're going to let all these people go back to their houses without even testing a damn thing and the water and the animals dropping dead like in Desert Storm all those animals were I mean that's how they knew they were in trouble and they were right in the middle of something that they couldn't get out of you know right. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's just deja vu all over. It's so funny. I can't get any straight answers from anything on that. that yeah. Plant, plant, cause yeah. Because no one, all my friends that live up in there, like Garfield, Redding, and people like that that live up there close right. to it, they're not going to drive over there. I wouldn't ask him to. He's one of my, one right. of my a great friend of mine. And it's like, I wouldn't ask him to go to that town and freaking check it out. But I really am curious about what really is well, going on. Well, let me on. ask you something. You got somebody walking up to you in a hazmat suit telling you that it's okay to go back in your house. Then why in the hell do you have a hazmat suit on? <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, seriously? <laughs> you know? Yeah, they should tell you not to go back to your house. Yeah, yeah, ever. <laughs> and you know, and, and what's funny is you see you see the thing where they're taking they're drinking water now. You know, the governor's over there drinking water out of the faucet. And like, Just like when they were getting their vaccines, I'm sure that was fully loaded with the real vaccine too. Right. No offense, right? Yeah, but you know, but so do you feel? Of course, you've already said this, but I got to ask you again. Mm. So you feel like there's. A lot of conspiracies that go on. Well, not conspiracies, but things that are hidden from us. And do, it, do you feel like the do you feel like the news is ninety percent propaganda, like I do? I do. I, um, as a matter of fact, I and that's why podcasts like this one is going like this podcast is going to be very detrimental to the future of this country because um, yeah, you know, because that's where people are getting the real information from. I disconnected cable six years ago, and. He he and I, I mean, me and my husband, uh, we do exactly what you just said. This is how we know what's happening because I want to hear the real truth right. and not listen to what has already been on the agenda. Like I said, on both sides, I don't trust Fox no more than I trust CNN. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't oh, believe I'm none right of this there crap, with you. none of it. And, um, and, you know, it's kind of apparent 
uh, that we got a lot more going on than they want you to know. They've already got this planned out. And like I said, really, if you really want to know what's happening, check in with the WHO, you know, the WHO folks, okay? Watch. They'll tell you what they're going to do. They, they told us that this pandemic, excuse me, I'm going to call it what it really is, this pandemic. they already told you this was going to go down two and a half years before it went down. Right. People just need to dig deep. They need to start li listening to podcasts like this. They need to get their own ideas. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not an expert. I'm not sitting here telling you that I know all this, but I can tell you what really happened to me. I know what really happened in that movie. They don't, they don't go off making movies for the hell of it about somebody just for fun, okay? I mean, that You've really went You've been through a lot, and, and you have a lot of— you have a, a lot of information that's so a lot of data that a lot of people don't have about what really happens behind the scenes and being the wife of someone in the military at one time you had your whole world crushed because of um ne negligence well that's just it i was raised just like i'm sure you were raised um to believe or a do you think it was thing. just a, a negligence, again, you know, that they didn't they didn't think we were going to go against them, so they sold it to them prior to this whole conflict? And then... no, I think they I think they knew. I just think not everybody not everybody's in the know. Not everybody needs to be in the know. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna it sounds like I'm speaking with fork and tongue, and I'm not. No, no. So when I say that is like we can't sit here. You know, there's an old saying back in the old days: "Loose lips sinks ships." Okay, because that was back like one of the WW1 or WW2, whenever it was. But right. anyway. We don't need to sit here and disclose every move we're going to make as a country, right? The problem of it is, is you've got so many people turning on each other. We're imploding on ourselves. Look around you. Look at our economy. Somebody needs to tell me what the hell is going on for it to be doing so good, really. So inflation, for an example, you know, I'm sitting there. I went to the grocery store. Like I said today, <laughs> at least I didn't see a fight today. So that was good. But I'm sitting there and I'm looking at a pack of boar's head ham. That pack of boar's head ham used to call, cost me three fifty, less than two years ago. Okay, $4 was a bad day. I'm like, God, it's went up $8 for a pack. Yep. Okay, where what are we not seeing? Okay, what are we not understanding? There's a lot more. And what's happening is it's not just the United States. This one world government is going to happen. It's going to happen if people like it or not, right. regardless— if people believe you it or really not. You really think so, though? I do. I really do. Man, it seems like our, it seems like the human species, it's like the different, <clears throat> the different uh, races don't get along enough. No. To, to, to have a one world government. But now, I, you know. Until me, you have a catastrophe. We've been testing for two and a half years pretty well, heavily right now between COVID and then your little incident up there in Ohio. What's next? Well, here's the what's here's what else has happened that I wanted to ask you about. Okay. How do you feel about the objects that are getting shot down over our How country? How do you like that? Did you hear that uh, congressman sitting there saying, "You better lock your doors. We're we're getting invaded by aliens." <laughs> I love it. Well. Mm, yeah. I think we're picking a fight with the wrong team on this one, I, I and agree. I don't think it's our guys. Right. But, I, but I don't right. I don't know. But there's too much hush hush about it. Yeah. But he said, "Hey, man, this is what it was." But a cube that's not a balloon, and it doesn't have a propulsion system. Right. And they shot at the dang thing four times and missed it before they hit it. Right. Come on, listen. Well, if it, you've ever it, been out, it, have you ever been out in Nevada where they had all the aliens and they did all? I mean. Oh the, yeah, I got it's a picture. A, yeah, it's hey, incredible. Hey, hey, it's incredible. Hey, <laughs> hey. Yeah, well, he, he got to minimize that. You got to show her. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there, Jackson. Oh. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm looking at. Watch this, blow it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that not Listen, hilarious? I'm telling you, I think it's great. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you know, oh my god, I was on the, <laughs> I was on a trip myself, and I'm like taking a picture of myself, you know, in front of the Roswell side because I, you know, I, I had think, to go see where the. I think where, we're where, crazy if we think we're the only ones. I really oh, do, but now, but I'm gonna say this, okay? Number one, okay, if I am an alien, okay, let's just say it. If I'm an okay. alien, I'm not gonna pick that time necessarily to be floating across the United States. So let me let me let me explain this. 
to me, this this balloons and these little whatevers, it's called distraction. The government, it's just like anything else. You remember when they had the, what was it, the Academy Awards or whoever it was, and the two guys got in a fight because, you know, somebody was saying something about their wife and whatever. Oh, yeah. You yeah, Will Smith. Yeah, and yeah, all like, them. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But day. think about it. When was that happening? Think about the timing. Think about when that went, because this is right around COVID, okay? This was all, again, it was more distractions about other things that they were trying to incorporate or, or pass or whatever the case is. Right now, because we've got all these economic issues going on, okay? You've got interest rates going sky high. You've got people, you know, you don't hear, you hear about all these people losing jobs, okay? You hear about all these people losing jobs. How come we have such a shortage of staff where we can't get people? Like, why doesn't Kroger's have enough staff? Why doesn't I, I'm, I'm talking about? It's got nothing to do. I know with it. I don't understand all that. Yeah. What are you healthcare? Talking? Where's all these people? Yeah. Again, it's distractions. The, the the media. Okay, that's why I can't stand them. You know. Um. But anyway, they're 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 they have an agenda, and they're trying to get everybody distracted. Oh, we got aliens. I'm not I'm not dissing aliens. I'm saying what timing? Oh, so now we're going to admit that we've got aliens? Is that what we're doing? When you knew what what back 1940 something that you had yeah, like something going. Yeah. So so it's just it's just uncanny. The timing, the timing is what I keep going. Even with everything else that's happened, I'm always mm -hmm. looking at the timing because it's just I do believe that there, there is a total agenda. And I think you're going to see a lot of things happen in the next two years. I really do. I really believe that, you know. Anyway. Well, this this shooting down things, these things have been flying over us for years. Right. And right. now they so we start freaking start to shoot at them. Well, let me ask you something. How did they not detect it with all the technology we've got right now? They saw it. They, well, the spy balloon, they knew that was coming over. But I mean, but when, why they didn't shoot it down before yeah. it came over? That was definitely a propaganda thing for Biden. Look at oh. me. I'll shoot it down. Um, Once it goes all the way across the United States and they shoot it down on the other side. Seriously. But now these <laughs> others, but now these others up in Alaska, here's, yeah. here's yeah. what I do know. I do know that. The one, the first one that they shot down, the unidentified right. flying object, was shot at by a Sidewinder missile. Right. And a Sidewinder, you know, is a heat sinking yes. missile. So the thing had no heat signature. Right. Um, well, that's enough to tell you that it's something that we don't know much about. And then they can't find the wreckage. And why would you shoot something down with a Sidewinder missile that you want to try to figure out what it is? Well, again, I think they know I mean, way more. Why would you blow the thing up like that? Again, it's a distraction. I think they know way more. I guarantee you. It, you know, regardless if we're the only ones or we're not, I guarantee you oh, they no. know way Listen, more. Listen, my alien cousins, man, they're, they're just hanging out going, what's going on down there? And yep. I'm like, I came down here to mate with some human women, man, to spread this alien seed. I'm just trying to break and make my way through this whole thing. I understand. I understand. And uh, I, find, I find humans su super interesting, especially musically. Yes. Uh, they've lost their minds. <laughs> <laughs> not entirely. There's some good stuff out there, yeah. but not yeah. not much, man. It's, <laughs> it's slim pickings. Yeah, it's slim yeah. pickings. No, I hear you. The ones that are really great are really great. Yep. And uh, agree. but anyway, anyway, uh, no, but but good. no, I was just wondering what you thought about that whole that whole alien or not alien, but the, they're shooting down things now. It's like, oh, they're saying they're the government's saying because we upgrade our radar system now we have we can detect more bullshit right right listen man it's, those guys have been <laughs> they're so far advanced they know what in the hell's coming in and out of our country's airspace and they have absolutely. since world war freaking two I absolutely mean, they know exactly as soon as well they could reach us they knew they know exactly who's coming in and out of our airspace and they know there's an un unidentified flying objects that they don't know what they are and now they're getting all trigger happy going well let's just shoot them down and they're picking the wrong fight with the wrong people well again they're sitting there and they're trying to distract with you know other things that are really going on okay you got to understand why all of a sudden this right now when you got all this other crap going on okay again you've got people dropping like flies and they don't know why everybody's getting sick and dying you got you know perfectly good athletic people that are sitting there dropping dead on the field or right. whatever i mean you've got entertainers dropping dead out of nowhere right. okay wow 
Wow. So, and then, like I said, oh, let's give some more money to Ukraine or whoever it is so they can oh, have retirement. Yeah. Please, we got to go help those people. We can't help ourselves. We can't do crap here, but we can go help everybody else. I know. We don't, and I we're going to use your tax paying dollars to do this, but that's okay. Y'all need to be okay with this. And sure. They could always yeah. they could always put some money to the ham industry so you could get that ham down to at least four bucks. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, yeah. th that would be helpful. Hey, let's all go to electronic cars so that we can cut the electricity off. My daughter and them know well out there in California about the, you know, was it P&G shutting down the electricity at the most unopportune times. I bet you can't, you know, charge up your Tesla when you have no electricity, even with your non-gas power powered generators, because you can't right. have gas powered uh, lawnmowers. So let's just get real stupid with all of it. Let's just, and everybody just follows along like little sheep and let's go to the edge and let's see how many of y'all going to jump off with everybody else because well, that's what's happening. I think... I think, too, man, that um, it's almost like um, a Sigmund Freud's survival of the fittest or the smarter, the dumb ones die yes. off first and the smart ones. And I think often about that when I smoke a cigarette. I'm like, I'm one of the dumb ones. <laughs> but, he, but here's what's great. What's great is, is I've already reproduced. I have seven kids and, I'll, and I, I've had enough reproduction. And if, I, if she gets pregnant again, I told her, I said, I mean, no, that ain't going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get pregnant again. Because her, she'll be like, oh, we're having a baby. Oh, great. I'll be like, oh, my God. Because it won't be one. It'll be two. <laughs> like the last set. Yeah. It's not going to be one. Oh, I got two sets. Oh, my God. Oh, oh yeah. my God. So you think about food being high. I mean, for yeah. us as a family. Yeah. You know, we're, we're right now we have we have six at home, including me and the wife. But, right. But, but we also have. We also have an adopted daughter and, and two sons, right. and both of my sons are big, burly guys. Right. So you're talking about when we have family dinner, it's a good amount of money to feed all imagine. of them. And I it is. Imagine. And, you know, but I love it. I mean, I love them coming over. I mean, it's my favorite times, you know. But when, you know, you got to ask yourself, okay, when, you know, things get like this. Now, I don't know, not in my lifetime, uh, have I ever seen stuff go up so quickly. I know. I right. remember the 70s. I was around in the 70s. I remember, you know, the inflation. I remember the gas lines when everybody was parked out there, you know, waiting to get gas somewhere. I remember when gas was 25 cents and then all of a sudden it went to 30 cents and my grandfather yes. goes, they want 30 cents a gallon yes, now. Yes, exactly. If and he was alive today, he'd be going, what, what in the world are I, we exactly, doing? Exactly. So you've got to think, and this has happened so quickly. God, I sound old, don't I? No, well, I sound I'm older than you, so does that tell you anything? Not much older than me. You're like, what, three or four years older than me? Uh, four or five. <laughs> it's all good. But I'm just saying, though, it's increased. If you were to go back, like right now, to this date, two years ago, and look at how much has went up in just two years' time. So you can't tell me that these people that are barely making it, and see, they keep saying, oh, let's raise the minimum wage. Okay, that sounds great in theory. I'm not disagreeing with that because we need money to be able to buy stuff. But here's the problem. If the inflation keeps going up even higher beyond anything, what are we going to do? Well, no one's going to have a job. You see what, what good I'm saying? does it do to, break, to raise um, um, minimum wage if the food is so high that you have to buy Right. That, that, you know, it makes up for it. Right. You know, totally. and that's, and, and you know, what I'm wondering is, is where our country is, is you know, cause I know that the America is the new Roman empire. Right. Um, and that scares me. Yeah. Because Rome did fall. They did fall. And we're a young country. You know that. Yeah. I mean, we're still very young uh, in consideration. Very young. And yep. I think there's some decisions that's been made. I think that our population in itself needs to settle down and start. Hey, it's like, um, who, who, who was it? Uh, oh, heck, that comedian guy always, uh, I always watch. Anyway, get real. Everybody right. need to keep it real. Yeah, keep it real. Keep it real. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. need, need to keep it real. Um, oh, oh, yeah. What, what is his name? Chris? Chris Rock. Rock yeah, yeah. Keep it real. Yeah, keep it real. Yeah. Because, because and that's the thing is like, they don't keep it real. Right. And I, I'm serious. Like, uh, yeah. just the things are, that are not important to everyone else. Let them be important to you. That's all right. But leave us alone about it. That's all right. Because you're costing us money, costing us time and costing us distractions. And some people are never going to believe the way you want to believe them to believe. It's just like we talked about racism last night. Like racism, you're never going to get through. There's going to be idiots 
out there and, 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 and ignorant people who are racist. I mean, it's never going to go away, well, no matter how far we go down the timeline. Right. But I say that. But it's sooner or later, though. But what's defined? What is racism? I think there's more racism going on right now because they're oh, I know condemning there is. people because, you know, I'm talking about. I don't they care. want us. They want white people and black people and Hispanic right. people and all of us to hate each other. Hate each other, right? So they, they can, are creating so they can, the division. So they can exactly. keep control of us. And you know, there you go, control. And, it, and, 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 and yep. it's just the truth. And it's like, you know, it, it's sad because like, me and Junior were talking when we were growing up. It was nothing like that. Mm. Like you know, because he's he's same age as me. He's fifty two. Right. And it's like, we just look at each other like we, right. we'll we'll spend the day with each other, just drive around and do our right. thing, go to the shooting range and right. Right. act like two bros that we are. And uh, we'll just be like, we'll just see something, some st something stupid, and we'll right. just some kid that's dressed up stupid, and I'll just go, what happened? Well, you said something about going to the gun range. Okay. So um, I love guns. I, I'm an advocate of guns, without a doubt. Um, it's like an American Express. I don't leave home without it. And, you know, I'm amazed <laughs> at how many people are so against that. And I'm sitting here going, OK, um, here's another interesting story. Uh, my aunt got murdered um, and this happened in, in 76. And, there, you know, I know what it's like to have that happen. And that, you know, what happened was she wound up, she got her head blown off. Uh, and it was because of a relationship, and unfortunately, there was a jealous woman. You know, you know all that good stuff. But they deliberately planned it and, and murdered her, and they didn't find her till like a, a month later. And my dad had to go and identify her half decayed body. Wow. So one of the things I'm an only child, and one of the things my dad did for me was he says, "You're going to learn how to protect yourself, and you're going to learn how to shoot a gun." So I won't tell you when my. I mean, I was shooting guns by the time I was four anyway. You right. know. And I've never shot and killed anybody. I'm not going to shoot and kill you unless you're trying to kill me. You understand? And I do right. believe you need to know how to use them. You don't need to be stupid and just grab one and think it's a toy. Okay, do not get me wrong there. But like when my daughter turned 21, the gift she I, she got for her 21st birthday was mama buying her a gun and sending her through, a, you know, a training course, you right. know, just so she could go do the safety thing. But I, me traveling as much as I did there for a while with my job, there was a lot of things that occurred. And again, people don't realize you need to be not stupid. Listen, if you're going to call the cops and you think they're going to be there quick enough by time, you know, for them to really do anything, mm -hmm. you need to keep on thinking. Because I got news for you. You need to go ask a couple of my friends. I had one friend. She traveled, and long story short, um, they had scoped her house out, and she lived in a real nice place. And um, anyway, she had her gun, but her gun was in her purse, sitting on the pur passenger side. This guy was waiting for her by some bushes, grabbed her by the ankles when she got out, beat the hell out of her, put her in intensive care. Basically, he tried to rape her. He couldn't because he was too drugged out. But what I'm saying is you need to be ready in an instant on what, what? to do. Well, you're not allowed to see. There we go with that political correctness. Oh, you're not allowed to protect yourself. You're not allowed to have a gun. You're not allowed to have different thoughts. You're not allowed to do this. It could be considered anything. You got to fasten your seatbelt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, now I they make you fasten your seatbelt because your car alarm won't start going off. Uh, not well, mine uh, You haven't even got the, the freedom thing. to not fasten your seatbelt. That's right. And I love my Hummer because I don't fasten my seatbelt. Well, and I love not fastening my seatbelt. I really do because. Right, right. Not because I feel like I'm getting away with anything. It's no, because, right. Because, but it's your choice. And I'm in a tank, yeah. basically. Yeah, but it's your choice. Right. That's, well, that's my point. So it goes back to what I said earlier on in the podcast. It's got to do with control. Everybody thinks it's all about the money. Even with what happened in Desert Storm, it was all about the money. No, it's not. It's about control. That's how they're going to get you because, obviously, money is about to be worthless. I'm sure you've heard about the digital cur currency stuff that they're even approved. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're about to lose, you know, all the dollar bills that you've saved away in your little cans, you know, out there in the backyard or maybe big suitcases somewhere. It's going to be about as worthless as a tit on a boar hog. So you might as well get ready for that. It's yep. about control. How are they going to control you with cash? They can't. But with digital, they're going to know where you are, where it's going, how it's coming in. Do you get where I'm going? Right. All of the wars are controlled the same way. It's all about control. And and let me let me let me ask you: Do do you feel that Desert Storm was even something that we had to do? No. It was a useless thing. I think that that was absolutely. You know, I know a lot of veterans 
And, and again, I want to thank every man and woman that's ever served this country without a shadow of a doubt. And I hate to think that anybody from day one that this country was ever formed has died for this country needless, needlessly. You know what I'm saying? Because I know they were standing for a good cause. Does that make sense? Right. We started getting crazy at Vietnam. There, that's where I, 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 you know, if you go back and you start looking at the history, okay, I'm just saying, if you were to really dig, it's like me, I got this thing about Christmas. I'm not happy with Christmas now. I used to love it. But, you know, if you start digging where it come from. Oh, if you know where it came from, you would be totally crazy. And I had that on a podcast and I got people commenting on it, really yeah, bad comments. And on I'm it. all about, like I said, I'm all about Christ. But what I'm saying is. But you Christmas got, is not about it's Christ. Not a, it's not about Christ. If, nope. if, if, if Christ is telling me to go lie to my child and say a man in a red suit is going to bring gifts. And, and that's got any, and, and like the Easter bunny during Easter. And the man. What does that and, got to do with Christ dying and, on the cross for and you? Saint, and St. Nicholas was. Was literally a monk that went crazy and killed Absolutely. kids. Absolutely, and, absolutely. But they, they see me this. This is Saint Nicholas. Yes. This one lady yes. did back home, and bless her heart. And yes. I'm nothing against her. Right. She's a sweetheart. But I'm like, that's the wrong Saint Nicholas. Yes. That, exactly. If you Sorry, want to do your digging, if you want to do your digging, and you want to find you, out he was a murderer and murdered kids, and yeah. how a whole, you yes. better not shout, you better not pout, you better not cry. That's I'm right. telling you why. And I will not because because do it anymore. You know, Saint yeah. Nicholas is going to come and he's going to kill you in the middle that's of the night right. if you don't behave. And people don't realize that because you know what? Nobody wants to hear the truth. Malcolm, think right. about it. If I will sit here and 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 if you really wanted, if you knew something really, really, really bad was going on. Would you really want to know it? Like maybe I think a lot of people right. want to keep themselves numb. Like that's one of the things that me and my husband have been talking about. I've never heard or seen so many people on antidepressants as I do now, especially after COVID. Think about it. What better way to control somebody? I know many people that died in nursing homes, gave up in nursing homes during COVID because they couldn't see their loved ones. Do you understand about this? I have an uncle this? that did that. Okay, well, I've got friends, that, and they had their parents do this, and I've lost He starved my... himself to death because thought, he thought that we didn't love him anymore. And you think this is okay? That's why I'm saying people need to wake up. And quit being all, I mean, they're being wusses. Okay, I, I would say something else, but I'm going to be nice. Okay, because I'm, I'm just trying to be. But people need to start standing their ground because they've permitted too much. There has been too much loss of life because of the, all this bullshit that's been going on for quite some time. Ago. Loss of time, too. But <laughs> yes. I mean time. Yes, yes. Like, like time and and. and, and, yes. and Time is money, money's time, yes. whatever you want to call it. But also yes. time is also love. Yes. And time equals all these different things and like That's right. like at the beginning when God created the earth, there right. was time, there was a place, and there That's was right. matter. Right. And those three things are the trinity of our existence, right? So it it, it it's um you know to take away, though, to not be able to see your loved ones when they're in a hospital and they're about to die and stuff. And I had a good close friend. He was on a podcast. He lost his son. And there's some things that Joe Rogan says mm -hmm. that I, that I kind of cringe at because I'm like, listen, oh, the pandemic was no big deal. Well, it was a huge deal for a lot of different reasons. Yes, it was. And it wasn't just because people right. died. Right. It was because it took us into a direction that was the direction that we're still going now. That's right. And it seems to me, I'm just saying from my standpoint, all these things are shooting out of the sky. Then we got the train derailing. Yeah. Then we, you know, do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. And it Absolutely. looks, it looks to me like we're going to have some bad trouble pretty soon. Oh yes. And, and, and you know, and the thing about it is if you can't trust your own comp, your own country to send your kid to go serve. Amen. And that's what I want you on the podcast for. Amen. And that's exactly near the end of the movie. That was one of the things that one of the real veterans had said. Why, how could I ever have my kids? Because, I, like I said, I was I was raised to believe, like I was going with that, with the Christmas We're thing. Americans. And we, you got to stand up and you got to fight. Boy, and my dad, this. boy, yeah. if you ever got to fight for your country, you're going to fight there hard. You and you'll go. die for your country just like that's I would right. have. We got too arrogant. We got too confident, we got too arrogant, and then we got too power hung hungry. And I'm talking about this is where the control comes in. You've got people that may not have the same agenda. They may have other things. They they will 
be nice to you, suck up to you, be your best ba- uh, pal. Uh, let's say business wise. Hey, it, you know, if I scratch your back, you'll you'll right. scratch mine. That type of thing. Well, then it's like anything else. It, it's like a lot of these congressmen and senators. Okay, the reason they get themselves compromised because they do so many dirty things on the side. And I'm not saying all congressmen or senators. So don't be you know calling me up or calling Malcolm up or making any comments. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the people that are corrupt that are making themselves or getting themselves in a position of of compromise because let me just say this let's say if i videotape somebody doing something they shouldn't be doing like let's say they're married and they're over here having a fling with you know whatever however many partners i'm going to control you by sitting here and saying if you go against me on this bill I'm going to let people know about what you've done. Do you right, see what I'm saying? But right. I'm your BFF if you're out there doing it with me. Do you see what I'm saying? What? So it does it in the same thing in the workplace. Everybody's compromising themselves. If they would just wake up and look what's going on around them and quit being led astray with distractions and really pay attention and start taking care of your family. I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a prepper, but I'm not a not a prepper. If that makes any sense, I'm I'm right. one of these. I see this coming. I see something coming, and it's not good. Yeah, we I have we. I need to buy another freezer. We're about to move into a house, but it, it's like yeah, we're getting one too. To get to just have stocked yep. up, you know. Yep, and get you because a even if you got a freezer and electricity goes yeah. out, it, the food's going to stay for a while. Yeah, right. Correct. Dump right. some ice in it and yep. go for it. That's right. Know? That's right. Right. Um, but you know, or pickle it. Believe it or not, you can pickle meat to where it doesn't matter if you lose all the electricity in the world. I tell you what, world. though. I tell you what, though. I've got man. You got to watch one of my podcasts with uh, Gary from the Jam down here. He uh-huh. come, we did a podcast. I'm serious. You ought to look that one up. Okay. He did a whole thing on that canning and oh you know, yeah, on, 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 absolutely. On podcast. Yeah. And um, you know, there's certain ways that you have to do it, or you could freaking really die of poisoning. Oh, yeah. Really easy. Yes. Yes. And there's a certain way, and it's so funny because I'm not ever buying jelly or jam or any pickled thing from a, a farmer's market ever again. No, I won't. I, yeah, I agree with you. Because there's yes. so many people who won't. And there was a lady who yes. freaking did, did something and, and ended up poisoning her whole family to family reunion. There were 16 of them that got killed. This has not happened it's long like ago. A, it's like a botulism, okay? That's, yeah, botulism. That's, okay, yep. so that's, okay, There's uh, that botulism was used in Desert Storm. So you're talking about natural? Yes, that was one of the chemicals. So ironic that we're sitting here having that conversation. Think about this. You don't have to worry about nukes. You're not going to worry about somebody firing down on you. Like, really, I'm not worried about somebody having guns or nukes as much as I am the biological warfare that they could even create just from crap going bad like that. Botulism, that is absolutely in can food. I and that's what they like had. That. That's one of the yes. summer stuff they had. Yes, botulism. Yeah, look it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, ironically. So that's what I'm saying is we're, we're turning not just against each other as humans, but, I mean, we're really turning. Like, we're using our own stuff against each other. Does that make sense to kill right. us and all? So what better way to – well, I'm not going to give anybody any ideas. I was going to say, but what better way to get rid of a bunch of people? I won't never go and eat at a salad bar again. There's a reason. I don't trust anybody anymore. All you got to do is sprinkle a little bit. Think about it. I will not go and eat at a, a buffet or any. I need. Wow. I you never need to think that about that. that. People are mean these days, and you don't know what what's going to be the next distraction. I keep talking about distraction. I've said that several times through this podcast, and I'm and, and I don't know why, but I it lays heavy on my heart. I just think that everybody's getting so distracted, and they're not paying attention to what's really coming down the pike. That I think. People are going to see, and they're going to say, oh, my God, how did I not see that coming? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Not that this is a fear podcast, but I'm just (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not a fear podcast. Yeah. Oh, it is getting pretty late. It's getting pretty late. Man, thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you. You know, I wanted to really be prepared. I hope I did okay. You did fabulous. And you guys out there, it's thanks of a grateful nation is yes. the name and it's going to be at the bottom uh there's gonna be a link you can go to it on the link it's called uh it, it's called the um the, the, gulf, the gulf war the gulf think, war yeah yeah the gulf war and uh please comment at the bottom uh, this is going to be one of our long podcasts that we put out this month uh please comment and let us know what you think and hit the subscribe button and the bell so we can you can know when you get our podcast and thank you so much for coming thank Thank you you so much it was awesome thank you